What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another first ride here at Ryzhnov where we get to ride the Java Perak or Pirak, Perak, something like that. It's a bobber style motorcycle from Java, the Czech manufacturer. We have a single cylinder 330cc engine putting out about 30 horsepower and about 33 newton meters of torque. But this bike is all about the styling. I mean, this is a completely unmodified bike. This is a completely stock motorcycle and the details on it are absolutely amazing. First of all, we got spoked wheels, but we do have disc brakes uh, made by, by Bre. Starting off at the front, we got a bullet style headlight up here with some old school style indicator with what I think is a metal fender on the front normal fork but it does look like an upside down fork it's a very interesting fork design we've got the horn up here we got the speedometer in a backward style in here inside the headlight that encompasses the handlebars moving on down we've got a mono seat that isn't on springs but you can see the rear suspension right there with the mono shock but it's so well hidden that the bike somehow looks a little bit like a hardtail and also the rear fender on the back twin exhausts that do not don't have uh, any x pipe i don't think they have an x pipe nope it's two single exhausts so the sound should be interesting it has something here Let, this is the ignition right here let's see what we have here oh we got the battery and everything let's put that back that's the battery over there and we have something here yeah let's see uh, I think this is the air filter those go back so no storage on this bike whatsoever but yeah it's an interesting motorcycle we got bar and mirrors that are arched down it's a complete design exercise but how does it ride we gotta take it out for a ride put in the key ignition this is a wonderful piece of design. I absolutely love it. Kill switch. Starts off no problem. It's an interesting sound. It's This is interesting. <laughs> anyway, first gear. Let's take it out for a ride. I think the rain might be coming in, but uh, we're going to take it out for a quick test ride. <coughs> six gears on this beast, and with just 30 horsepower, you kind of have to work all six gears. We do not have a gear position indicator, so you have to remember what gear you're in. But I really love this backwards uh, speedometer it's just so reminiscent of old school 30s motorcycles and uh, you have no rev counter so you kind of have to go by ear but you kind of also go by vibrations this thing vibrates so let's see higher rpm suspension is it's rough higher rpm it does vibrate but just a little bit you know it's not uncomfortable the vibrations are not uncomfortable this is an awesome little motorcycle. You do have that feeling of an old school motorcycle. Rear brake, it does have a little bit of long travel, but then it does bite. And front brake is done by Bybre, so it's a single disc up front. You can feel it's a single disc, but you know, it works good. It's decent. We're gonna see up in the twisties how well the rear brake work, the rear and front brakes work. But now we're gonna have to go up, so we're gonna have to see the power of the thing. I've already caught up the traffic, which I do not like. But I don't know the weight of the bike. It's probably around 200 or 250 kilograms, but because of the position, man, it feels so easy to chuck into the corners. I mean, the Bonneville felt heavier to chuck into the corners. And the engine is plenty torquey. We're in sixth gear now, top gear, and if you open up the gas halfway, it does start moving, so you can keep it in top gear. We're running 80 kilometers an hour, and it feels like I'm going a million miles an hour. <laughs> that's, 
that's nice about this kind of bike the fact that it gives you the sensation of high speed even when you're not going too fast that means even with traffic I can have a lot of fun it feels like I'm pushing the bike to its limits but we're only going 70 kilometers an hour that's an interesting one but it doesn't feel unstable it doesn't feel unsettled by bumps it doesn't feel unsettled by corners it doesn't feel unsettled by getting on the throttle or getting hard on the brakes it's a well put together machine and it does feel like an old school motorcycle <laughs> that's it we're in sixth gear at 80 kilometers an hour this might not be such a good touring bike or it might be a good touring bike if uh, you're happy with these kinds of speeds this is where it feels happy down two cogs chuck it into the bend get on the power engine brake chuck it into the bend keep it there keep it there and wide open yeah <laughs> it ain't that fast but it's fun you know i'm having fun that's the main thing with a bike like this you don't buy a bike like this uh, to be fast you buy a bike like this to enjoy yourself to have fun at some decent speeds you buy it for the feelings that you get while you ride it and i have to say with the design of everything and the this front fairing up here with the speedometer and the headlight together they just work and this gas cap yava motorcycles they just work it's nice how they've hidden all the modern logos underneath this so when you look at it it's so clean perak written up here and this pen striping i know it's they're only decals but you know it looks good when you ride it it looks good and that's the main thing i'm not a big fan of these mirrors they work they don't vibrate it's just i'm not used to mirrors like this and uh, mm, looking down in them i you know what i can see decently well behind me my only problem is with mirrors up here you could basically just look with them down here you have to go like this it's a lot of extra head movement but uh, looking at these parts and the way manufacturers share parts i'm pretty sure you can adapt the normal mirrors from other cheaper yava motorcycles so if you want this design but you want to ditch these mirrors and get some proper mirrors then yeah that is an uh, option you can have but you know before i would do that i would actually try it i would actually try riding it with this these mirrors for a while and now as we start getting up into the twisties let's see how the yava handles the twisties i don't know what gear am i in fifth sixth that's it so five four three two let's leave it in second gear and just chuck it in you know it feels light it feels happy it has enough torque to push you out of the corner in a sensible way i mean you do it in a comfortable way the gearbox is nice and smooth it's slickly slick through the gears even up changes and down changes up shifting and down shifting down to second gear chuck it in power out easy on the power this is a nice motorcycle granted it's about six and a half thousand euros which i think it's expensive for this brand name and this power of motorcycle it's a 30 horsepower motorcycle but i i kind of agree the design works and it's very hard to find a motorcycle like this the seat the seat is getting a little bit uncomfortable in the sense that the padding isn't there but then again if you want that look of a solo seat it's kind of what you have to get oh such a fun bike to ride i'll just open this up because we're not going that fast maybe you can hear the engine a little bit better let's see
chuck it in. And we've caught up to the car. So even with 30 horsepower going uphill, you're not gonna be impeding traffic. And I love how torquey the engine is. Even though it's not an air-cooled engine, it's a liquid-cooled motor. And it sounds, you can hear it, it doesn't have that air-cooled sound to it. And I think this was a mistake by Ava. Even though this thing has a little bit more extra power, uh, I think the air-cooled would have had, would have added to the charm of the motorcycle. It would just fit the style of bike a little bit better. But I can understand modern consumers want their air cooled, want their reliability, want their fuel economy. And I can understand why you would not, you would move to liquid cooling, but it's missing a little bit of the charm. I want to ride the, an air cooled Java to see if uh, the air-cooled engine is a little bit more charming. This one is nice and torquey, but it's missing that something, that certain element that a bike like this should have. And I'm pretty sure it's down to the liquid cooling and double overhead cam. Or actually, it might be a single overhead cam, but uh, the guys uh, at the dealership told me that uh, it, it's a four-valve engine, so two for intake, two for exhaust, and Although that is better and more efficient, uh, it's definitely, it takes away some, some of that old school feeling of the motorcycle. Up ahead we have an R90 and yeah, no chance of trying to keep up with that thing. Uh, let's see, punch it! He's probably going super relaxed and I'm flat out trying to catch up. But you know, I like it at these speeds. I genuinely like it. And we're gonna turn off here. Let's take another look at this machine. Neutral, easy to find neutral. Let's put it on its side stand. Problem is the side stand retracts as soon as you lift the bike and boy does it ever lean. But yeah. The Java Perec. It's a style exercise. It's a design exercise. It's a beautiful motorcycle looking at it in this backdrop. I mean, come on. It's absolutely gorgeous. And to think of it, this is how it comes from the factory. This looks like a bike from the 40s, from the 50s. And yet it rides like a modern motorcycle. We got front ABS, we got disc brakes, proper disc brakes. It's a wonderful bike. A tad expensive. The horn here, I really love it. The way it's mounted here. <laughs> With the Yava logo in here. That it's it adds to the drama, it adds to the character of the bike. And the uh, side stand retracted so you have to be really careful with this thing on its side stand and that's the only stand it has first gear now let's go down the hill and try out those modern day brakes this would be such a such an awesome weekend motorcycle and maybe even to take it to work if, every day because I'm pretty sure through the city it's not that difficult maybe the mirrors are not that good in the city but but you know, riding it here through the mountains, that's why I love this event at Rishnov. And even if you're from, if you're not from Romania, if you're anywhere close, just look up MAN Rishnov. I'll put the links to their Facebook page and all of the videos from here. But it's an event you have to try out. You have concerts, you have all kinds of stuff to do, fun and everything. And uh, it's a wonderful event. Admission is something like 30 euros and you can test ride a lot of motorcycles on these roads. There are I think 100 or 150 motorcycles to test ride and you can test ride them on these roads. It's absolutely gorgeous. And a bike like this has to be experienced on something like this. Riding a mountain road through the forest. Relax. That's what this bike is. This would be such an awesome weekend blast and while, while it is expensive at six and a half, at six and a half thousand euros, 
it is still half priced compared to a Bonneville and uh, in terms yeah the Bonneville there's no comparison between them the Bonneville is a much better motorcycle much more power and everything but in terms of feelings this is 75 80 percent up there and there, you can't beat a single cylinder in an old school style motorcycle I know the parallel twin is Triumph signature and uh, I get it and I like it but I like the single cylinder in this one even though it's liquid cooled even though it's missing a little bit of charm like something like the Royal Enfield Meteor 350 has a li or even an, any uh, Royal Enfield 350 has a little bit more charm the powertrain has a little bit more charm and character uh, this is also awesome and when you keep it a little bit lower in the revs it's, it just goes that that tractory sound that we come to know and love <laughs> Whee! and the brakes are good I, they're genuinely good I have nothing to complain about the brakes you do have to pull on the lever and press on the pedal a little bit but they will stop and I know I have ABS so I have no problem putting some effort on the lever you kind of get it they're not confidence inspiring at first but once you realize that you have to put some effort into it a little bit it kind of adds to the drama of the entire situation because old school motorcycles used to have bad brakes and this one gives you as soon as you pull on the lever it kind of gives you that feeling of bad brakes but then when you apply some pressure it really slows down so uh, you got brakes you just have to know how to use them and it kind of gives you that feeling of old school brakes but when you really need it they turn into modern brakes chuck it into the band let's see can we all yep we can overtake come on Yava Doing 120 in the Yava or 110. Whoa, brakes, 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 brakes. Chuck it in, get on the. Lean on the thing. What are we doing? 80 kilometers an hour. It feels like I'm going light speed. Hunker down on the thing. It feels like I'm going at a breakneck pace. But actually, I'm going pretty, I'm barely crossing 100 kilometers an hour. I'm not even breaking the speed limit on this road. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, 50 kilometers an hour limit, limit. Oh, we're so dangerous. We're riding so dangerously. We're, we are actually doing 60 in a 50 zone. That's... And we're back up to 70, so we're no longer breaking the speed limit. <laughs> very nice motorcycle honestly it's a bad expensive but I kind of understand it there, there are cheaper variants of the Yava uh, no doubt about it there are cheaper variants of the Yava I think the lowest you can get is four and a half thousand euros so you can get that old-school Yava feeling uh, at a cheaper price but the Perak is the one that has all of the details all of all of these beautiful details of design this is you can make a story out of it if you take this thing to I don't know a restaurant and the, the person you are with uh, at the table sees it it's a talking point because it looks like you're riding a bike that is 70 years old the attention to detail is uh, very good on this motorcycle and uh, when you consider the attention to detail in terms of design and the, the price uh, it kind of balances itself out And you know what? We're doing a pretty good pace now, 90 kilometers an hour. We're keeping up with some pretty decently fast traffic. I like it. It can go if you want to. The corners are a little bit, it will lean into the corners. You kind of have to trust it. 
It will take corners, but you really do have to trust it. Nice and steady. It really stabilizes on the rear brake. Anyway, awesome motorcycle guys. If you ever get a chance to ride it, please do. I kind of like it. It's a tad expensive. I, I think maybe five or a thousand euros cheaper would have been perfect. But I like it. It's a good bike. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care out there everyone and ride safe. Bye!